Imagine if we had a readily available medicine that had the ability to repair organs and tissues damaged by life stricken illnesses, such as cardiovascular disease, macular disease, or bone marrow disease. With the use of human embryonic stem cells, we have the possibility to do just that. Surprisingly, the first embryonic stem cell was extracted from a mouse in 1981, and the first human embryonic stem cell was developed in 1998. But if this biotechnology has the potential to be a panacea and it's been around for so long, how come it isn't as widely known? So, how can human embryonic stem cells work toward repairing tissues and organs through proliferation, and how else can they be used by humans? Let me introduce you to the Human Embryonic Stem Cell, HESC for short. HESC may be small, but definitely has a ton of potential. HESC's journey began when an egg was fertilized in an in vitro fertilization clinic, a method where the sperm and egg is united in a lab dish. Once the egg is fertilized and becomes a zygote, it divides for 3-5 to five days and creates a 150 cell structure called a blastocyst. If we take a look at the inside of the blastocyst, there is a cluster of cells called the inner cell mass. These cells give rise to every other cell in the human body, but is depleted during normal childbirth when the embryo is implanted in the mother's uterus due to rapid cell differentiation. Following the blastocyst stage, the inner cell mass goes through a process called gastrulation, proliferating and organizing itself into three cell layers, called germ layers, the mesoderm, endoderm, and ectoderm. The germ layers are in charge of generating every cell in the human body, and is where the HESC is born. So before the embryo reaches the implantation stage, when the embryo would be implanted in the uterus wall, it is transferred to a laboratory dish that is prepared with the proper conditions to support the cell. The conditions, for example, could be embryonic fibroblasts so that the cells could stick, called a feeder layer, though researchers have found ways to do without it. If the cells survive while proliferating inside the dish, eventually the plate becomes crowded and they must be moved into several fresh laboratory dishes. This must be repeated for several months to grow a significant amount of cells, and the cells may not always survive, but the original cells may proliferate and create millions of stem cells, all without differentiating. The process requires meticulous and constant care, and may even seem inefficient, but the embryonic stem cells can proliferate without a limit. Inefficient or not, the process is imperative in order to grow human embryonic stem cells. But to clarify, HESC isn't the only one in the stem cell family, and has a few siblings too. There is adult stem cell, and the induced pluripotent stem cell. Adult cell is a tissue-specific cell, and while he's technically undifferentiated, he's committed to becoming the cell from which he came from. So if adult cell came from the brain, he must become a brain cell. Researchers are trying to find how to grow large quantities of adult stem cells, since he can't divide indefinitely. Induced pluripotent is an adult cell, but has been genetically modified with embryonic genes to behave similar to HESC. First developed in 2007, it is unknown if it even differs clinically from HESC. After an induced pluripotent is reprogrammed, they may differentiate into any cell and is no longer committed to a certain structure. Now more importantly, what can HESC do? The uses of HESC ranges from testing drug toxicity, advancing our understanding of infertility and birth defects, and studying cell differentiation in order to increase the possibility of cell transplantation. Firstly, let's take a look at HESC's use in testing the safety and potency of human drugs. Animal testing for these drugs are useful, but the side effects on the animals could be vastly different on humans, and could seem safe with animals, but not with humans. The HESC can be used to screen drug toxicity by differentiating into different cell types, which helps test a drug. This has created safer treatments and screenings. Additionally, the HESC has been able to identify reasons for infertility and birth defects. HESC can resemble immature gametes to show characteristics of germ cells, which develop those gametes. With this, we can observe gametogenesis, when cells undergo division, which may be one of the sources of infertility or birth defects. Furthermore, HESC also provides promise as a remedy to repair tissues and organs if we were to transplant new cells to damaged areas. However, there are several hurdles we must overcome before we may use HESC as a transplantation method. Firstly, a patient's immune system might recognize these cells as foreign and reject them, and suppression drugs may hamper a patient's immune system. Or, researchers must find a way to integrate the cells into the surrounding tissues. For example, stem cells that have been cultured to be healthy heart cells may not pump blood properly once transplanted. Additionally, the cells from the germ layers differentiate according to the signals sent by the embryo. Researchers must determine what these signals are in order to properly differentiate HESCs. Differentiation is important, since the cells must also differentiate to perform tasks, such as culturing pancreas cells producing insulin. 
Furthermore, experimentation is difficult to conduct since the human clinical trials and testing may be dangerous, and the recipient should be unharmed. And if that wasn't enough, the cells must survive and function for the rest of this recipient's life. While the cells offer a promising future, several roadblocks still remain to find the appropriate conditions and quantities of cells. In addition to the mounting roadblocks, past methods for extracting HESCs has usually killed the embryo, creating several ethical issues. While researchers have claimed that they've successfully extracted some of the inner cell mass without destroying the embryo, it's still largely a work in progress. So, after learning a bit more about HESC, are you going to judge him by his size? Though he may be small, he is definitely very powerful. But in order to make this an investable future, we must educate the public about this viable resource and to overcome hurdles in research. And who knows, it's possible that even clinical transplantation trials using HESC may be closer in our future than we think.